Hello guys, it is Straya Star and welcome to the moment we have finally been waiting for. This is Shooting Star Media Podcast and we are live from San Diego, California. Uh, so many things are going on. This is season one, uh, episode two. Uh, episode one was actually through an Instagram live with Barbara Lizette Sanchez, influencer and actress. And today is a little bit different. Today we do have a special guest with us in house and we're going to be talking about not only the media industry, not only about businesses and how to come up in the world uh, with finances, business, and the media coming together, red carpet, the next future events that are coming up. And as you can tell, we do have a little bit of uh, tequila shots going on over here with a little bit of Topo Chico, our favorite mineral water, sparkly. So let's go ahead and get the show started. We're going to be introducing Drew Doan with us, and he is here with us behind the scenes tonight on Shooting Star Media Podcast. So I'm looking forward to speaking with them. So let's go ahead and get started in three, two, one. And we are here finally with our special finally. guest in house, Drew Doan, not only CEO of his company with a lot of things in his life that are going on. Um, he's going to talk to us tonight a little bit about business, the yeah. industry and the finance world, real estate, flipping houses, and how, how that has come together, coming into and merging into the media industry. So let's give it up for Drew. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much for having me. Shooting Star Media is a proud sponsor. We are very blessed to do business with them. And hey, Ms. Strea, we have uh, been following your page for quite a while now. And we have to do say, we have to give credit where credit is due. You have done a, an incredible job. So let me give it right back to you. So I mean, it's an honor to be at this podcast here tonight. I, I understand, listen, the implications of even making it to this point and the success and everything where we're at today. So just amen, amen, amen. So right <laughs> thank there. You, thank you. Great Cheers job. Cheers to that. Great job. Cheers I mean, to we that. do have to have a little tequila shots in a yeah. little bit. Once the conversation gets a little bit Once more Once it gets going. Oh, boy. Get me, oh, no. I didn't know I was go going into this type of interview. They said <laughs> just be here by a certain time. I didn't know I was going to that type of interview. I've been there before, but you know, hey, thank God Tequila is here, everybody. <laughs> and for those who don't know, we're actually celebrating uh, still. I mean, his, his birthday was two days ago, October the 17th. It yeah. is now October the 19th, yep, but still yep, happy yep. belated birthday. Thank you. So I definitely owe you the shot of tequila. So yep. that's why we're still celebrating, right? 17 shots, right? <laughs> 17. Just kidding. Oh, actually, no, well, no, I guess it's a few shots. more. I'm a legal one, you know, so over 17 shots. That's, that's all that matters, that he's yeah, legal. <laughs> I'm legal, everybody. Don't worry. But, Drew, I mean, the whole purpose of having Tell you me. tonight here on Shooting Star Media Podcast, which I'm honored to have you because I've been wanting to actually talk to you. I mean, I've talked to you in a couple of events past it back in March yeah, we did in Los years. Angeles Fashion Week, but we really didn't get the opportunity to go behind the scenes of your life as an entrepreneur, as a CEO, <laughs> how everything just rise and escalated to this moment. So, I mean, I have had... I had had a lot of like DMs and people asking, okay, well, who's Drew? What does he do? Like, yeah. um, I see a lot of posts going about houses and this and that and real estate. So the first question I do have to ask you, so you can tell our audience here uh, live tonight, is that what what is it that motivated you to, first of all, start the career as self-employed, right? As an entrepreneur. Well, what started that is... Uh... <clears throat> I mean, hey, we all wake up in the morning and we all see that uh, that message that a 15-year-old kid made a million dollars on YouTube doing silly YouTube videos. Now, listen, I wasn't one of these type of people that I said I wanted to make a bunch of money making silly YouTube videos, but I just knew that there was a better way than waking up, going to my uh, just over broke, and that's what a lot of people don't understand. Job is an acronym. Now, listen, we do need jobs out there, and I'm not dissing jobs by any means, but I'm just saying in the industrial revolution, the word J-O-B, just over broke, was a acronym. They used to say, hey, Bob, where are you going today? Because, hey, it was the Great Depression. Everybody was out of a job, and it was a joke. I'm going to my just over broke 
Ha <laughs> where am I going today to my just over broke? So I always knew that there was just a better way as far as uh, there was a better way to create money and to have a better secure of your financial future and everything of that nature. So um, that's what motivated me to, to, to jump into the entrepreneurial world. I was working in the car industry and uh, I, I, you know, my, my manager at the time, he said, you would be lucky just to be able to make a hundred thousand dollars a year. And I just was like, bro, like I know people that make a hundred thousand dollars a year. So I don't know why you're even coming at me. And you know, let me, if I can add one point to that here is if you have somebody in your life, whether it's a boss and a parent an employee or whatever it is, you know, listen, some people might say, Oh, you'll be lucky to even make that certain amount of money. Don't let the income be, don't let the number be the cap of where you're is. Because let me, we'll talk about this. I'm sure manifestations are a very powerful thing. So if you have a limiting mindset and belief, if you believe you'll only make $100,000, you will only make $100,000, ladies and gentlemen. So, yep. So you were like, when the guy told you that your previous manager, when you first started like in the yeah. car business industry, you're like challenge fucking accepted pretty much yeah it was it was like well i'm gonna show you how great i am i mean look. wow wow now that's definitely a story you know dealing with the car industry it's not easy i mean sales and the whole customer service i mean it's it sounds a lot easier than it actually is, you know, Drew. Yeah. Now, I, I do have to tell you, because I know you got out of the car industry, right? And then you definitely wanted to go ahead and challenge yourself to make more money. You're like, what do I have mm -hmm. to do to better myself each day, each month? So you put those goals inside your head and you're going to go after them no matter what it is, the hustle, the grind every yeah. day. So the struggle is real to be, to be able to handle life as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So what can you go ahead and tell us what were the next steps that you take to where you are today? The next steps were, I mean, hey, it was really, I had to find an environment of people that I could surround myself with. And this was a crazy thing. I left a six-figure paying job to go start my own entrepreneurial thing. Now, granted, I got into the network marketing industry. A lot of people called it the pyramid scheme. But the question was, what did I have to do to get to the next step? I had to develop the mindset to get to the next step, right? Because I knew one day, hey, I knew I was going to make $100,000 a month. I knew that day was going to come. But what a lot of people don't understand is if someone dropped $100,000 a month in your bank account, what's going to happen every single month if you don't have the root system? to withstand exactly. that $100,000 a month. I mean, you look at people that made, made it in the lottery, they end up more broke than they did before they even won the lottery. Why is that? Pardon me, very simply, because they don't have the mindset. So when I got out of the car business, I knew I had to find like-minded individuals so I could get my mindset right. See, now that you bring that up in regards to the whole lottery thing, and like, uh -huh. you know, sometimes it is one in a million when someone yeah. in our even county, in San Diego County, when they win, and normally it's out of state. But like, that's right. I mean, now that you put it that way, it's totally about the mindset because like, let's say someone gets uh, $500,000, is a mini lottery, right? And they're just super excited. They don't know what to do the money. And boom, all of a sudden, in less than a year, it's gone because they yeah. didn't invest. They didn't uh, buy assets. They were just, what? What do you, I normally, I hear you say this a lot in videos, don't buy liabilities, buy yeah. assets. So buy assets, tell me a little bit about that. Like, what do you do to prepare yourself in regards to getting a powerful mindset, being in the grind and staying motivated? So, I mean, I know that's a tough question. I got to know the answer because a lot of us are probably, I sometimes think about it because I need to know how to keep my mindset going. I normally think like I have a good mindset, but I definitely want to know what to do to get better. So if you can tell us the steps on how to do and stay with the positive mindset, what steps to kind of follow? Because we, I think we all need that in our lives. Yeah. So basically, I mean, it's all about goals, right? It's all about your reason why. When the reason why is apparent, the reason how is even easier. You know, you got to have a strong why. Um, but just some tips and tricks. I mean, it's just be consistent. Discipline equals freedom. And if you just keep doing the same thing over and over again, 
A lot of people say that's the definition of insanity. But I say if you do the same thing over and over again, that is correct. You're going to have massive success. I mean, just do the right thing. And, and we all know what it is. Everybody, It's like this. People ask me, Drew, what's the quickest way to get a six pack? And I always say, why does it have to be quick? The pain is beauty, okay? The, pain, the suffering is the reason why you get the six pack. It's the discipline and it's the hard work, you know, because we've all been out there having a little bit too much tequila on a Friday night, man. <laughs> Listen, and I'm guilty of it. Listen, I haven't been a spring chicken my whole life, but I'm going to tell you guys, listen, it's about discipline equals freedom. There was a period of time where I didn't have any sort of uh, distractions or anything in my life. And that's how I, I, I was just very disciplined for a very short period of time, a season of sacrifice for a lifetime of freedom. So I was able to keep my mindset right and stay consistent. That's that's definitely wow. That's in, in very powerful. I mean, that makes everyone think like, oh my gosh, am I doing life wrong? Am I doing like not okay? You know what I mean? And it's okay because a lot of people, like including myself, and that's why I'm so confident in what I'm saying because I was on the other side of this coin. Like I was the dude where it was like, you know, fuck it. Let's go have a Friday night. Let's go have fun. Fuck you know, <laughs> you know, like turn up on a Tuesday. Let's go, you know. Let's all go have a good time. But but listen, you that that lifestyle gets old, man. I mean, those credit card bills do come and you know, I I I, I used to tell my credit card companies that I'm gonna have a dream, I'm gonna have all these things, I'm gonna have all these assets and all these things, but they're like, hey pay up, bro. Where's the money? So what did we have to do? We had to get, we had to get our mind right. We had to change. We had to get disciplined. And if there's one thing that I might add out there is no one is going to come and do it for you. This is, it all starts with you. Everybody's out there waiting for that magic moment in life that, you know, aha moment. And sometimes it doesn't come. Sometimes it does come. So, and sometimes when it does come, it comes in the form of a medical thing, a car accident, however it is. But I'm going to tell you guys, get, get to it before that point happens in your life. Get to it before your life actually tells you that you have to do it because it's easier and cheaper. And just go out there and do it. Nike says it best. You know, what's their slogan? Just do it. Just right? do it. Just go for it. That's true. Just do it. Just do it. And what 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 do you have to do? You're gonna, it's already this is what we teach in sales. Okay. If you go out there, I'm giving some free sales advice out there for everybody that's paying attention. If you go out there and I ask you to go buy, let's say this. You're out there buying looking for cars, and I say, hey. Do you want this new, beautiful Audi Q7 SUV that you can haul your family and look good while doing so? You'd be like, well, I don't know. I have to think about it. But the point of the matter is it was a no before I asked the question. Do you see? Yeah. So I made the opportunity for it to be a yes. Most people have a hard time of asking the question. So I just say, fuck it. Just go out there and just do it. Nike says, just do it. I say, fucking just do it. Just fucking do it. Right. I mean, what's the worst thing that can happen? Someone says no. Right? That's right. What's going to happen? Oh, my God. They're going to, oh, no, they said no. Get over it. Cry. My, you know, I had a great friend's mother who always used to say, cry a river, build a bridge, and get the fuck over it. Right. You know? Right. So. And talking about no, it's like I feel sometimes when people say no, 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 or they're knocking on doors for opportunities, whether it's in the media industry, as an influencer, oh, content God, creator, yeah. it's hard. And we're going to get into that in a little bit, like how to deal with that life, right? When it comes to LA and Hollywood. Just keep going. But exactly. So just do it. <clears throat> and uh, I mean, what you always say, like you're too blessed to be stressed, Amen. which that totally makes Take sense, two of those. right? So, I mean, my, my next question is when people say no, 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 of course you get a little bit depressed, a little bit down, but you can't rely on that. So, which brings me actually to our topic, what I want to talk about today in regards, not only manifesting, but like failure, I feel like failure, mm. um, it's, it's a strong, powerful word that if you hear someone says you failed, no, I mean, what do I have to do and what do I have to tell myself 
so I can keep going? Why should I keep going if everyone is saying no to me and I feel like I'm not going? Well, anymore? I got a question. Let me answer. Let me answer this. Her first psychology. Let me answer here. this question, question with a question. Okay. What's a failure to you? I don't think a failure is actually someone in general. And my in my personal and professional opinion is that if you quit, then you're a loser and a failure. That's well, what I think. Like me, you have to believe in yourself. You're right. You're only a failure if you quit. I always say there's a very thin line between crazy and genius. And you're only a genius if you don't quit and you keep going. But if you give up, then you're crazy. All right. <laughs> Cuckoo. <Sorry. laughs> so you're a little crazy. So there's a very thin line between crazy and genius. And, you know, just to keep it simple here, guys, the it's just hard work and just never giving up. Okay. Okay. So what tips? I want you to tell me the three tips, what to do for someone not to give up. And I know we're really emphasizing on this is because a lot of people who are watching this have goals, want to be someone, want to be somewhere, or they want to know what to do with life. Because believe it or not, especially with today's world, with the generation and everything, it's like some people don't know what to do with their lives. Right. Like they're finishing up grad school, they're finishing up college or going into college and they still don't know what to do because I well, feel like they need a bigger mindset and they need to set their goals. And not a lot of people have goals. I mean, I'll tell you, there's a traditional view to this. There's a conventional and unconventional view to this. I like to work with the unconventional view because that's the side of the world that I really relate in. But the more conventional side of everything is that you go to school, you get a good job, you uh, retire, and you live, you know, 30, 40 years for the rest of your life on 30, 40% of whatever your income was. Mm -hmm. And what I'll say to a lot of you people out there watching, and, you know, that's that might be the system that you guys are subscribed to, but if you guys are struggling today on on a hundred percent of your guys's income, how in God's green earth are you guys going to make it on 30 to 40% of your guys's income in 30 to 40 years from now? I mean, maybe let's maybe, maybe not that long, 20 years from now, look at the rate of inflation in the last five years. Oh yeah. I mean, I mean going to the grocery store, I mean, theme parks alone, everything is going up crazy. I mean, yeah, no, I totally get that. Go on, go on. I mean, I can just go on and on and on about this. Like, guys, it's it's so apparent and very obvious that 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 we have to take control of your you have to take control of your future some way somehow. And I mean, listen, a lot of this is what I always say to everybody: have your employers pay your wages, have them pay your 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 apartment your your house whatever if, you, if you're fortunate enough to have a mortgage have them pay your mortgage have them pay your apartment have them pay all your bills but that's your nine to five what are you guys doing from 5 p.m to 9 p.m okay this is you know you and i we've had conversations off camera about this and it's like it's funny a lot of people get to this point in their life where they're like they know exactly who got thrown off on the island on all their Netflix marathons. <laughs> they know exactly what happened here on all their favorite shows. And I'm sorry, we might have some people unsubscribing to this because <laughs> the truth hurts. But you got to hear me out here, man. You guys understand all this bullshit. But what you guys don't understand is how did I lose? all? I made all this money. When you get your guys' tax return, you're like, holy shit, I made all this money. And I don't have any extra money for this, 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 and this. And the government took how much? What, what, what the hell's going on over there? <laughs> but meanwhile, you guys know all this other bullshit. And listen, guys, and I'm not trying to offend anybody or hurt anybody's feelings. That's not what it is. I'm trying to wake people up to the reality of what it is. Because, hey, my mentors all told me this stuff too. This is the hard truth and this is the hard reality to life, guys. I mean, my mentor once told me this, that big, beautiful TV that you see on your wall. Listen, is it a liability or an asset? This was a question that you asked me. And my, my answer was, 
It was a uh, uh, asset to me so I could learn. He said, well, what are you learning? He looked at my YouTube history, he looked at all my, my cable history, and he's like, no, it's all bullshit. You're watching HDTV, all this <laughs> other bullshit. But that's what I wanted to mention to you guys here is how much is that TV on your wall? Some of you guys might say it's a $1,000 TV. You got it on a Black Friday deal. And I say, all right, that's cool and all. But how much time is it taking from you guys? Every single hour that you guys spend on it, that company that owns that TV, that cable network is taking that money from you. Guys, so where is your attention going? So is that TV on, a wall, on the wall there a liability or an asset? Most of the time, if you ain't doing meetings and using it as a presentation or an ability for a classroom and learning, it is a liability to you guys, and it's taking money from you. Oh, boy, I think I'm going to have a little shock because I feel like I'm getting a lecture in school right oh, now. Oh, I'm sorry. I just <laughs> – listen, guys, listen, man. I, I – this, this – You hear that? Woo! Oh, it's not even that. Listen, guys, I, listen, I hope for the people that are still would with you us. Like a shot yeah, yeah, I would love one. But for the people that are still with us and got that message and understood what I was just saying, <laughs> you guys get it, man. It's it's all about just limiting the things that take time away from you guys and just taking back control of your guys' life with the little things. Yeah, exactly. No, cheers. Cheers to cheers, that. Cheers, everybody. Uh, like I said, it's such a pleasure having you tonight. I mean, Definitely, we're not even we're not even halfway done. But uh, I'm uh, to everyone. This this is a little le le uh, lesson, you know. What we, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, oh my god! Like you have good advice that really like hits home. Is it like a little bit of liability? Is it uh, an asset? I'm gonna be personal. On my note, I think it's a little bit of both. It could be. <laughs> it could be. I mean, like I said, man, it's just. And I'm not here to judge any single person because it's not like I, you guys do your own life. I'm doing my own life too, but I'm just here to give advice. You know, right, this right. is what I'd be telling my own children is saying, Hey, if I walked into their house, I'd be like, Hey, listen, kids, is this a liability or an asset? You know, is it taking time away from you or is it adding value? Well, cheers to that. Cheers to adding value. <laughs> Salute. Mm. You know, as a true Latina, sometimes it's a little hard to take the tequila. Yeah, where's the limes? <laughs> I'm going to owe you a little bit of a chili lime and uh, salt rim, but uh, just true shots. Some tahini. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, it's really good that we're talking about this, especially with uh, today's generation, the millennials. I mean, if you noticed... Uh, there's a lot of people that take the influencer route, the content creator, because it is, if you put yourself 24 seven to it, it is a paying job, especially, yeah. you know, like such platforms like TikTok and a lot of stuff, you know, streaming or even gamers, because I mean, they've turned that, what you would call a liability into an asset because they're so good at it. They're actually making their own income, which in reality, that's them being an entrepreneur, whether if it's gaming or being a content creator, because that's something that they're bringing right. in as income. So what would you say would be like the first thing a millennial would have to do to be able to start their own uh, business, their own life as a CEO? Oh. I mean, I know it can go different ways for different individuals, different personalities, but the most basic, the most generic thing that someone has, besides having a good mindset. You know, <clears throat> a lot of people ask me, how do I start in something? And I give this analogy of a store owner uh, failing in business because he doesn't open the store. He basically has to stock the shelves and he has to sweep the floor. And basically where I'm going with all this is so many young individuals think that they have to have the business cards. They have to have their suit and tie. They have to have the fancy office. They have to have the fancy computer. They got to have the brand new iPhone. In my opinion, all that stuff is a bunch of baloney, a bunch of bullshit. Guys, it's just start, you know. Like when I started a lot of my companies, I didn't have all the fancy stuff when I first started. I grew into it. Like I was talking to my internet lady the other day and we were, when we were talking to back about um, when, when we, when we were using the basic internet plan and 
and hey, when you start a business, you have to protect your capital in the beginning because all the capital goes towards uh, future business. And hey, I was running my company on the lowest internet plan. But it worked, Drew. But it worked. <laughs> and you know what? And that's what I'm saying, guys. Don't be afraid of cutting your expenses where it counts. I, 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 I did the good deals. And, you know, Stray always likes to ask me a question when we're when we're in public, what's the secret to your success? Oh my gosh, and, I gotta ask to you right now yeah. on the podcast, Drew. What's the what's the secret to your success in saving money and being good on income and stuff? Yeah, yeah, okay, guys. Inside always joke. find a good deal, <laughs> number one. But number two, if you can't find a good deal, always get the kids meal. All right, the kids meal is where it is. It's the value <laughs> menu, ladies and gentlemen. The value menus of anywhere. Now, I'm not talking about McDonald's. You go to some of the best restaurants out there, you get the kids menu. That that to-go orders are fantastic ways of saving monies. And if you don't have a kid, like we don't have kids, right? T take a kid, you steal a kid, it. just no. kid. No, I can't say that. No, I'm I highly kid. Everybody, please, please, I'm taking no, the microphone over right now. Do not places. take any people's children, okay? There you did not hear that places. from here. There's some places that do not let you get kids meal. We don't I shop think there. It's well, yeah, I know that. But some places that if you don't have a kid with you, you can't get ordered up for the kids meal. It's like, why are you trying to break my budget, bro? Like, so what you do is just call in an order and then pick it up. We might oh, get some haters in the comments. <laughs> Some haters over there, like business owners saying, no, oh, we know you, you're not allowed to shop. Anyways, guys, you know, I, Ellis, I ain't trying to create haters, man. I, I'll order off kids, kids many. I mean, hey, <laughs> I don't care. the internet's a great place, guys. I'm just saying in the phone. Anyways, anyways, let's get back on to a more, you know, you know, guys, that is, I, I think the, 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 the moral of that story, guys, the moral of all that advice, you know, don't, you don't need to go buy the expensive shoes. Go buy the go buy the shoes that look like the expensive shoes. But don't don't go out there and say they're the Balenciagas. Don't go out there and say that they're the name brand. Be proud of that you got a good deal. I mean, listen, man, I, I still rock around. Like I still tell Straya, like Straya was like, Oh dang, those are some nice shoes you got on. I'm like, Well, you know, how much do you think I paid for them? You're like, um, 200 bucks or something oh, yeah, like no maybe. 25 bucks or something this you know is... and that's and i buy them at marshall's guys like i'm not ashamed of it like some people see me up in marshall's and they're like what do you mean man you're rich why are you here i'm like guys this is why i'm rich this is hella rich stay rich yeah man don't like don't be ashamed like... to any of that shit <laughs> like you know buy quality buy quality yeah. one time so you don't have to buy it over again you know like i mean I, I would love a sponsor here from Ferragamo, but, um, <laughs> but listen, I bought, you know, shameless plug to those guys. Um, I bought a belt four or five years ago from those guys. Best belt I've ever had. You know, I've, you know, all the gentlemen out there, you put, wear a belt every day, gets frayed. You get that $25 belt from Costco. You know what I'm talking about. It comes in a three pack or something. Real nice. <laughs> it's a good deal. You know, Kirkland. good deal. Kirkland <laughs> specials, you know, Sometimes they get the Calvin Klein. Maybe that's about $35 of ooh, bougie. But anyways, this uh, Sergio Ferragamo belt, I'll tell you, man, three, it was like three, 400 bucks. Still wear it today, and it looks mm. brand new. Like, so buy quality. You've actually worn that belt actually to a couple of red carpet events. Yeah. I mean, if you guys go scroll through my Instagram. Now, if you guys go to my first name, Drew, D-R-E-W, mm. My last name, D-O-H-N, and you see a bunch of underscores, that's going to be me right there. So He's the only Instagram username with a shit ton of uh, underscores. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be me. It's strategic. <laughs> All right, Drew. Well, now let's go ahead and talk a little bit about how in the world is the feeling and how did you get into the media industry? Well, I know how, obviously, you know, I kind of, we kind of talked about that, but, <laughs> but for the people, like, how is it like being a CEO entrepreneur yeah. with your whole like real estate flipping houses all, all over across the country, like implementing that now coming into Hollywood, coming into LA, we're going to the red carpets. How are you taking the celebrity side of your life? Like, what are you feeling? What goes through your mind? It's like, pretty I fun. personally want to know that. Yeah, it's pretty fun, man. I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> um, Shreya was telling me she's, 
you know, the first red carpet thing I did up there, she was coaching me and everything. I was like, oh, okay, cool. You know, just talking to the people. And then the first, you know, the first time was great. The second time was even better. Were you nervous the first time? No, you know, I mean, I always just, I always looked at, whenever I'm in nervous situations, <clears throat> so maybe I, fe- <clears throat> pardon it's me. It's okay to be nervous. Maybe I it's felt okay nervous. It's okay to be nervous when it's but, the first time. But yeah, of course, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Anyways, I always just say, I always feel like I'm just talking to my mother's best friends. You know, it's no big <clears throat> deal. But I mean, truly, 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 guys, I mean, if you can do business, you guys can talk to anybody on the red carpet. I mean, most of the time, the people on the red carpet, they want to, they genuinely want to help you grow and they want themselves to grow. And they, and you know, people get a bad rep on the Hollywood thing and sure, but it's all about views and publicity. So at the end of the day, guys, <clears throat> long story short, is I really just think if you know how to do business and you know how to communicate with people and navigate people, you guys can do this. I mean, it's not, it's, it's not the end of the world. It's not the hardest thing in the world, but I mean, if you know how to communicate effectively and just have a conversation with people like with your mother's friends and record the interview. Yeah. So you you would say like the base key here Mm. for the media industry is basically have good communication. Extremely and good be communication. Yourself. Be yourself. That's the most important thing. Like, honestly, like I've done the ins and the outs being on the red carpet and being outside of the red carpet as as an interviewer reporter <clears throat> for shooting stir media when we do events. So like I know the ins and outs of what it feels to be on it and you know, interviewing a celebrity, an influencer, or anyone in, in the industry. Yeah. So like I remember the first time that I interviewed you, I was like, I was like, oh my gosh, because it was like years since I last saw you and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's like I got a little bit nervous. <laughs> but you know, it was still handled. It was still taken care of. And this is not your first red carpet. Um, you have been doing a lot of red carpets. We have been doing a lot of red carpets after March. And the last red carpet that we went to was for Shai Gutierrez in mm-hmm. regards to the toy charity event the past October 5th. So that was pretty fun too, because you're coming into the Hispanic community. So how do you feel as an American that you're coming into a Hispanic Latino community and the these guys are opening the doors for you and accepting you. Well, I've, uh, uh, you, you said it at the end. They've opened the doors for me and they've accepted me. I really feel like uh, with any language or anything, people get a bad reputation just because of the bad apples. But I mean, personally, guys, in, in school, I studied American Sign Language. You know, hi, my name is Drew Doan. You know, my sign name is D baseball, all that good stuff for all you people that speak American sign language, you might've caught a few things, but what I found in that community, very similar here to the Hispanic community is that they open you with open arms. If you try, like, listen, if you come in here and you are the stereotypical type person, they're going to treat you like that stereotypical, typical person, you know, and that's with any type of person. They treat, it's just their people at the end of the day. And personally, I like the Latino community better than honestly, my own cultures because they're, because they come in with open arms. You see what I'm saying, guys? It's not just, it's not superficial. It's, it's real. It's, that's what I love about the Hispanic culture, the Latino culture is that they just take you in and they treat you like your own and they treat you with dignity and respect. And yes. I can't say that for a lot of other cultures, especially in the Hollywood area. But, you know, hey, that is what it is. And that's why I love these people. That's that's very true. That's good. That's good that you, you feel that way, you know. And in regards to red carpets, like when the spotlight is on you, the lights, the paparazzi, the photographers, like, do you feel sometimes, because I know it happens to me, like, do you feel like the rush, the adrenaline, like, it's like, oh my God, all of this attention is for me. Like, am I really here? Like, does, does sometimes that it, does it feel a little bit surreal? It's pretty cool. I mean, yeah, you just, <laughs> it's like anything. You just don't think about it. You're just like, hey, you know, block out all the flashing lights because truthfully, I, I don't like all the lights in my face. I, I don't like the cameras. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't like flat. I, I truthfully don't. I'd rather just, you know, 
I'd rather just get on the phone and do a phone conversation like this, you know, behind, you know, <laughs> wherever I'm at, preferably in front of the pool. But, you know, <laughs> hey, that's, that's, you know, the world that we live in. We got to be belly to belly is what I like to say. Right. And I just, I just do the best that I can in whatever environment that I'm in, you know, so whatever the situation per makes me have to be, that's what I have to be. Wow. Wow. That's and I think that's good. a lot of the key to my success, guys. I mean, I'm not emotional about it. Like whatever I have to do in that situation, I just know that job has to be done. And how I feel is has no regards to the outcome of the situation because it has to be done. That's that's very true. That's a very good get topic. her done. Get her done. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, get her done. But on a side note, the tequila same shot note. has hit. Oh, well, it feels good. Shall we do a little, uh, a little refill, a little, little jingle, jingle? Pretend that we're. Oh, by the, the by the way, these were purchased in Bucerías, Nayarit. That I went to on a vacation for a month. I was gone. Whoa! But um, a whole month vacation. Well, it was work slash pleasure. You know, I always have to take my office everywhere I go to. Because for those who don't know, yes, I do have a regular Monday through Friday job, but I'm very blessed because I love it. I'm in the finance industry. So a little bit, it comes in hands, you know, with business industry and everything together. So I work remotely. That's the best part, you know? If I might add there, that's one of the big things that I do like about this Straya star over here is the fact that I mentioned in the very, very beginning, how people have that nine to five job but what in the heck are they doing from that five to nine? Amen. What is she doing right now? It's nine o'clock in the evening over here. We're shooting a video here. We're doing a podcast and we're getting it done, guys. That's, we're getting done. We're getting it done here. Cheers to being Cheers. a successful, young and successful entrepreneur club. That's what it is. That's what it takes. Before our 30s. Thank Before you our very 30s. Much. And that's what it takes, everybody. <laughs> Cheers. Mm. Let us know who else likes taking tequila shots because. I mean, I hope everybody does. There are some people. I used to not be able to hang out with tequila. Tequila kind of wipes me out real quick. I thought they gave that to you at an, as an IV. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm a Latina a bird, yeah. Mexican. I yeah, automatically yeah. have tequila. I mean, I'm not saying that, but I mean, man, I just thought that you guys drank this shit like water. <laughs> well. I mean, listen, I drink like a fish. So anything there is in front of me, so tequila, whiskey, whatever, you know, whatever it is. But I just thought this was like, I thought it was like this Topa Chica, you know. Oh, but, um, but no, you know what? Tequila is good. I've, yeah. I've been into tequila, but I, I've been always more like into wine tasting mm. with the cheese mm. and the meatballs. Well, it makes sense. And then the whiskey. I love my whiskey on the rocks. Well, it truly makes sense because I do see a lot of your content and you'd go do... And you go to a lot of vineyards and everything like that. So it makes sense. You got, you know, as an influencer, you got to go do the things that you like and you got to go do the things that you don't like. But, you know, Straya Star is a real, real <laughs> legend here. And that's why it's such an honor to be one of the very first people to be on this podcast because she's a type of woman out here that gets to do the beautiful things in life that she wants to do. She get, she doesn't have to have, she doesn't, she makes her own money in her own way and she gets to create her media company the way that she wants to create her media company, not the way where the dollar makes it. She, the dollar doesn't dictate her media company. She's independently has her own money and that's what makes her content so great is because it's true passion. You understand it's ladies organic. and gentlemen, it's organic, <laughs> it's raw and it's real. A lot of your content is a lot of this, and that's why you've had a lot of the success. I mean, if I might add, you once had an account up to like 15, 20,000 followers, oh and you just surpassed a, an amazing level at this point, around like 15,000 followers at the time of the shooting. And I might add, like, that's an incredible achievement. Like, not only helping other people, but like having that for yourself, that's a personal achievement. And but that's, then I got hacked. But yeah, then you got <laughs> hacked and all this other stuff. And that's why I'm like, you're at 30, 40,000 followers because you built multiple accounts, personal accounts to that level. And, and, but why did you build so quickly, guys? That's what I'm getting to the point here is 
You built that so quickly because you posted your passion. Consistent. Consistent it wasn't, passion. I felt like it wasn't a job. You know, doing what I love, time goes by fast, you know? So it's like, I don't feel like it's a job or anything like that. So, but I appreciate the compliment. It yeah, really does yeah. mean a lot. And I'm glad we're having these shots because shots. after a long day of work, you had a long day of work. Uh, you've been celebrating your birthday with family, with friends, yeah. with everything. Um, so I do want to go ahead and talk about uh, how a couple things um, also do want to go ahead and make a shout out to Imagen Latina Magazine, who has always supported my career. Um, so I do want to go ahead and hand you out there. Not the latest, because the latest one will be launched at El Farayon um, in Linwood, California, this Sunday, October the 22nd, red carpet. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at the past editions of magazines. So this one was for the 10th anniversary with Imagen Latina. And then we have this magazine as well. If you can help me, Carrie. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, want to make a shout out. Quiero decir muchas gracias a Roberto Carrillo por siempre apoyar mi sueño como artista, como empresaria con Shooting Star Media. And la verdad estoy muy emocionada del domingo 22. Así que para los que están interesados en ir a, al show de cena y de baile y de la alfombra roja, para que puedan seguir aquí al username de Roberto Carrillo de Imagen Latina para que compren su boleto que incluye toda la entrada. So make sure to not miss out on purchasing your ticket for Sunday, October the 22nd uh, for the next launch of the newest magazine that is coming out. And yes, I'm featured in the magazine, so it's such an honor. And a little bit about an insight that I'm pretty sure that Drew knew this from the previous uh, red carpet that we got interviewed by... Um, double a in regards to industry connection 103 well, yeah there i am so these are the couple of the magazines um with the imagen Latina. looks like her looks like that's me. her it's got red hair so you know yeah, it's, it's me. gotta be her <laughs> put the microphone up to your mouth like that that looks like a, a carbon copy to me same <laughs> earrings yep that's it these are thinner these are thicker. I'm not an eyewitness, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> but that looks very similar. Yeah. So um, this is going to be a red carpet event Sunday, October 22nd. Make sure to add Imagen Latina Magazine. You're going to see the username right here. And this is going to be in Linwood, California, in the county Linwood. of Los Angeles, California, mm -hmm. at the venue center in El Farayon. Another red carpet event, which I'm I'm honored. Like I love going to red carpet events. Honestly, it's it, it's great. So I'm I'm really excited and looking forward to that. Now, something to wrap up here, uh, Drew. I do want to ask you. We are coming to the end of 2023. Like. So much has happened, like for the both it's of about us. about 11 this, weeks away. Yeah, we are like mm -hmm. less than 100 days till Christmas to New Year's. How are we finishing strong? What What are we going to see in regards to more red carpet? What are your goals in the media industry? What are your goals with flipping the homes across the street? What, what man, across the state? Sorry, the tequila. Shot Such a loaded in. question. What? <laughs> so, yeah, so, so big for the last question of the night. What can we expect for Drew Doan for the rest of the 2023? Well, the end of the year, this is the last push, man. I mean, it's my birthday and uh, uh, it was my birthday on the 17th of October. If anybody wants to mark that down in their calendar for the following for year. For future presents. For future presents, you know. We take get, cash, no gift get cards. Get with my PR team. <laughs> Thank you very much for uh, presents anyways. <laughs> but uh, what's coming up? I mean, man, we're going to be buying a lot of houses. We're going to be selling a lot of houses. That's what we do. Um, anywhere because, I mean, listen, I'm doing anywhere between 10 to 15 offers per markets. And I'm in about like five to six different markets all over the United States of America. So I do a lot of volume in real estate. So buying and selling probably about 50, 60 more properties all over the country. Um, in the media, we do have a big goal. I think I mentioned it to you. We got a goal, pardon me, of 100,000 followers by the end of the year, 2023. It's called manifesting, guys. It's manifestations. Manifestation. So 
I mean, hey, we might be a little ways away from the time of recording, but I guarantee you we're going to be pretty dang close. A lot closer than we are today. I can guarantee you. I can guarantee you that or your money back free 99. Okay. <laughs> I love how you always so say now, free 99. Uh, uh, now the big goals. Uh, well, I mean, this was a big goal of getting on podcasts and doing live interviews and things like this. I mean, Hey, I, I like to go to a red carpet event, show my face and everything. But I mean, listen, as an entrepreneur, I'm up. I, I say I'm up. I am up in the office. But I like to say I'm down in the trenches because anybody that works with me, know, anybody that's listening to this on my team, they all know that I'm in the trenches with them. I'm always available. My phone's always with me. Literally. The Literally phone is always. always with me. <laughs> you know, it's, it's next to me all the time. Like they, my team can always get with me. And, you know, that's, that's what we have working on. We, we got a lot more houses coming. We got a lot more coming on Instagram and social media um, and flipping houses. And a lot more red carpet events. A lot to more red carpet. Yep. That's, that's pretty awesome. And I'm glad I'm able to share that with you because it's a whole different experience. Cheers to that. Cheers. And I also want to go ahead and uh, tell us for the people who are watching this on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube, and not directly on, on, on Instagram platform right now. Uh, where can we go ahead and follow you? Like if they want to go ahead and maybe get a little bit of insight behind the scenes on how to become, you know, uh, someone like you, um, if they want to know questions, like random basic questions. Can I send them to my Instagram? Yeah, yeah. That's what we're oh, going to yeah, go ahead yeah, and yeah. do. Okay. Like if someone wants to say, how do I get started with flipping houses? Like what do I yeah, do? Yeah, man. Like what, what, what's Yeah, I mean, listen, guys, uh, we, we have a lot of different avenues. We teach a lot of different people how to flip houses. Over the last five years, we've taken about 2,000 students all over the country and teach them how to flip houses. Um, and we're very, very proud of that. And because of that, we have a very strong network. We have a very strong network of buyers and sellers as well as lenders. So that's pretty cool. But the best way to get a hold of me, guys, is uh, through my Instagram. Uh, I mentioned it one time in here, but hopefully we're going to have a post right here where it says uh, my first name, Drew, D-R-E-W, my last name, D-O-H-N, with a bunch of underscores in there. Make exactly. sure you see the underscores in there. As you that's can see the I'm image be. below right here. Yep, that's where it is. Uh, you can go ahead and make sure to Bang. hit that follow button and follow Mr. Drew Doan for more information, for more future Me. content on Hollywood celebrity red carpet events and how he's becoming more and more successful each day. And if you ever have questions on you wanting to get out of your bubble and growing as a person, an individual, a human being, and you feel stuck, make sure to DM us. We're more than helpful. We love pushing motivation. We love pushing manifestation. So as you guys know, you can follow me on Shreya Star Official on TikTok, on Instagram, and on Facebook as Shreya Star. And also for my music industry, you can follow me on all digital platforms on Apple Music and also Spotify, Claro Musica, Deezer, Amazon, everywhere. Literally, I'm all over the internet, not to do cloud, but yeah, thank you. I'm very <laughs> proud of myself. Taking but over it's, the internet. It's <laughs> But I do want to go ahead and thank everyone for watching us today with Shooting Star Media Podcast Season 1, Episode 2 with Drew Doan. You guys are most definitely going to be seeing Drew a lot more often in all of the content. He's like, I have no choice. <laughs> when I can get down from the office. <laughs> because he's always stuck in the office and everything. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure to catch us next Thursday because we are definitely going to be talking about topics, debates, controversy, life experiences, and a little bit about everything. And also coming soon, a uh, special guest with artists, publicists from the media industry. So I'm Straya. I'm Drew Down. Thank you so much for watching. Love you guys. Make sure to follow and stay tuned for the next Shooting Star Media podcast.